mucoid plaque. Is it real or is it fake? And this is what this whole video is about. I just wanna share with you a few things that I've learned over the last five years, but more recently over the last three months, regarding mucoid plaque and where this stuff really is. When we start to consume a diet that's an unnatural diet, right? If we refer to books like Western A. Price, Physical and Nutritional Degeneration by Dr. Western A. Price, where he went around the world and he analyzed the diets of tribal and native people and he compared those diets to tribes that have adopted a westernized diet and he's shown the differences in jaw and teeth and facial structures, as well as bodily structures and health implications between the two different groups. And he found that those that lived with a more primitive and natural diet, eating whole foods and readily prepared foods and local foods and seasonal foods, compared to those that eat the processed foods, they're much healthier, right? So when we consume a diet now that is un, you know, unnatural, processed, and especially if you grew up in the Western world like me, I grew up on cornflakes and frosties, right? Frosties, rice krispies and cocoa pops and all of that stuff and pasteurized milk products and frozen food from the supermarket like pizzas and fruit flans and cheesecakes and things. Like I grew up with the most horrible foods and I think most of my friends did and most people who don't really have parents that are too aware about the diet stuff, grew up on these kinds of foods. Like when you grow up on these kinds of foods, your body does take a hit and it keeps going because you're consuming all of these different toxins and they are impeding the way the gut functions and the way the whole digestive system functions from the teeth, the mouth, to the stomach, to the pancreas, to the small intestine, to large intestines. And this chain event sort of disables the, the gut and what you tend to find is the gut starts to build up residues of toxins. And mucoid plaque forms essentially when you eat these kinds of foods that are very acidic to the body. And when the body becomes really acidic, your body has to produce more mucus to buffer those acids or to buffer those toxins. So everybody knows about the mucus membranes within the colon, like the colon actually secretes mucus. And this mucus, it has all of these electrolytes so essentially minerals, and these minerals help dissolve the toxins. When you eat an acidic diet, your body then has to use these minerals to buffer all of the acids that you're consuming. And so this mucus part of the GI tract that is being secreted starts to become depleted of its electrolytes naturally because your body's having to use those electrolytes and minerals to buffer all the different acids. What I mean by buffer is neutralize those acids. And so this mucus starts to become depleted and it's not being able to break down the toxins in the gut as effectively and efficient as possible. So it has to produce more, it has to produce excess mucus. And it's the excess mucus that eventually leaves that slimy layer as John Rose talks about, the slimy layer across the colon. And this will trap toxins, it will harden over time and it will pocket around the different areas of the gut, right? And so. What really perplexed me was, although I know this is true and I've gotten rid of mucoid plaque myself and my friends and my circle and I know of and people who have gotten rid of this stuff and it's shifted so much in their health when they got rid of all of this. Some using binders and chelating agents like bentonite clay and psyllium husk and mega dosing enzymes and some have gotten this stuff out naturally using just water fasting, right? So this stuff does come out. But what really perplexed me was like this idea of how when they're analyzing the bowels, like in America, the amount of obese people, right, that pass away and then they're cutting open the, the bowels and doing, they're doing uh, an autopsy, let's say, and they don't find this mucoid plaque. I mean, they do find it in some cases, like people who do colonoscopies and people who do autopsies, they do find this plaque, but it's not as common as you think. And knowing the way the world has gone and being kind of like a detox coach and looking into it, it's like we, we know that many people have this in them, but why is it not being found that prominently in everyone, especially within the gut? And it perplexed me a lot. And it was this one kind of caveat to this whole thing. I was helping people get rid of this stuff, but that was one question that was lingering in my mind. And 
It wasn't until I went to a retreat uh, from my naturopathic mentor that he was hosting where he kind of said something like, when you're using the binders and you're, you're really pulling out this plaque from the gut, it's not necessarily in the gut. You're actually, the binders are pulling stuff around the gut. And that, that interested me and that stuck in the back of my mind like, hmm. And then I came across a lot of stuff from the herbalist, Dr. Christopher and Dr. Schultz. And these are massive naturopathic healers that have done tremendous work in this space and in the game. And they are the OGs of this kind of work. I remember a conversation that they had and he was talking about that this plaque isn't necessarily in the gut. When they do colonoscopies, they just don't know what they're looking for. It is projected and suggested that most people that have lived on this Western diet at least now in this modern world, and it's gonna get even more in the future, we're gonna have things called bowel pockets, or what Dr. Christopher called over 50 years ago, diverticular, right? And diverticular are these pockets of pus and toxins and secretions that live on the outside of the gut. They protrude outwards from the, from the bowel. They're not inside, they're outside. And it kind of looks like a piece of ginger, Right, like if you were to take the, the bowel out of somebody's stomach, I mean, that's gruesome, but like if you were to do that, it would look like a piece of ginger with all these kind of bulbs on the side. And Dr. Christopher was saying things that, you know, people are gonna have these 80, and Schultz are even saying like 90% of the people are gonna be having these in the future. And the interesting thing as well is that they're asymptomatic. Like you necessarily don't even know you have them, but if you've been growing up on these these kinds of westernized diets you can assume that you have. And they are bioremediation, they're a necessary part of the body. Like the body needs to do that to pocket its waste. And it makes sense, like it wouldn't want waste accumulating within the gut wall because that would throw off a lot of the ecosystem within the gut. And even though it has to some extent, the body has to find a way in which to pocket this toxicity and that's what the body does, we know it does this because of tumors, right? Cysts and tumors, the body will pocket toxicity into little clumps and balls so that the body can carry on doing what it needs to do. It can carry on living and thinking and feeling, but not deteriorating the body to such an extent where it will just literally collapse the body. So we know this: the body has this capability of coagulating waste material and depositing it in tissue or on the skin or whatever. And so the gut is no different. And it's like, how are we not thinking like this? Like, why would the gut be different? So when I came across this, then that's when I realized that the mucoid plaque isn't in the gut necessarily. For some it is, but for a lot of us it's not. It's in these pockets that are deposited around the gut. That's why when they do the colonoscopies, right? They're not looking for the right thing. So when they see like a black speck or a little hole within the colon they don't really look at that but behind that black speck and behind that hole is this pocket of waste material and when you're using the binders like the clays and maybe you're mega dosing enzymes or you're doing the fastings and juicings and you're pulling this stuff out you're pulling out this stuff from the diverticuli and that's 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 where this stuff is and I just wanted to share that with you because some of you might be thinking you know the same thing and I just wanted to share and help you piece together the puzzle. Because mucoid plaque is real. It is, it, you know, anybody in this space knows that it's real. And it makes sense, it's, it's, it's a sensible thing that the body will do. Yeah, we just gotta get this stuff out. I mean, everybody's, to some extent, might have some. I, I've lived a holistic lifestyle for eight years. And, you know, I was detoxing regularly and doing bowel cleanses and stuff, but I never did a specific mucoid plaque flush and when I did that I saw stuff come out and it was like wow all right even those detoxes that I were doing was not as powerful as really ripping this stuff out yeah this stuff can toxify the system it, it can deplete you it source of toxemia within the body that it really struggles to deal with and get to because of how hard and because of how pocketed this situation is the body doesn't have much to be able to remediate it naturally. And so it's causing havoc. It's causing the body to be in this sort of frenzy and fight or flight. And so getting rid of it can be really profound for your health. And um, so I hope this video is valuable. If you like these kinds of videos, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. 
and giving this video a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.